Uh, let's talk about the various steps that need to be uh, followed in, in uh, applying with device registration requirements. We're going to walk away through the four C's as we refer to them here. Uh, first one being create an environment. The second one being collect the data, lens the data. And the last one is comply with all of those regulations. So there's a lot of prep work in the beginning, uh, one, two, and three, before you can actually uh, make some submissions. So let's work our way through that. Uh, some of these slides uh, uh, I'll go rather quickly over. I'll leave them for some homework <laughs> uh, so that you can take a look at them later on. But under creating uh, your UDI environment, uh, there's three uh, very common sub steps, if you will. Uh, create your team, uh, identify your UDI requirements for your products. So there's a lot of information out there you want to focus in on what you specifically have to meet and then evaluate your situation. So what is the uh, gaps that you might have in, in bringing uh, uh, products to, out to the, to the market uh, with UDI on them? Now we get a lot of questions uh, and I want to touch base a little bit more on just the two areas there, the applicable rules and timing. So we're going to dive into that just for a second and then we'll come back to this checklist. You'll need to consider your portfolio in three different buckets because the timing and registration requirements um, are different for each of these buckets. The first uh, category there is those directive devices. Um, they are intended to, well, they're currently being placed on the market, but the intent for those is that uh, when it comes uh, time for the date of application for either the uh, medical device or the in vitro diagnostic, um, you actually discontinue those for various reasons. Um, so you bring them up to the date of application, you no longer market them. It's significant in that uh, there is actually a little bit of a, a touch point for these devices with the, the UNIMED and, and the device module. In the event that there is a serious incident with these particular devices, you will need to report that serious incident. And as a prerequisite of doing so, you'll need to register those particular devices in UNIMED. And there's some special conditions about how you go about doing that, but that would be the only touch point. I would imagine most of those items in your portfolio are legacy directive devices. These are devices that you're currently placing on the market. And after the date of application, you'd like to continue to do so. And there is a transition time, uh, depending on whether it's a device or um, in vitro diagnostic, two to three years, um, where you can continue to place those on the market. There's a couple of criteria. Um, it does have to have a valid certificate, can expire, uh, no significant design changes. Um, and as you meet those criteria, you're, you're able to, uh, uh, place them on, on the market. But you do have to register these devices, and there's a time period for that. The third category are those MDR and IVDR compliant devices. They're the ones that you bring out to the market, and they comply with uh, the regulations uh, from day one. So there's um, different timing and different types of registration requirements, depending on which category you fall in. i take a quick look at some of the timing gets to be a clutter chart, so bear with me here. <laughs> the first layer is a uh, set of information on the legacy medical devices, and most noteworthy is the date of application for MDR, and then this 18-month uh, window that we talked about uh, is, is after uh, the announcement of that Udemed is launched, so that is uh, in place from November 2022 to May 2024. And then if we layer on those medical MDR um, compliant devices, so there's uh, some timelines there for implementing uh, UDI on the class, uh, on the uh, particular products by class and also placing on UDI on the products. Uh, but what I want to highlight is the fact that the registration is now in sync for legacy and MDR devices. Mm -hmm. And if we do a similar type of presentation for the IVDRs um, compliant devices and the legacy IVDs. Um, again, the time the conversation is very similar. Um, registration window now is all lined up. Interesting that all these devices have the same 18 month window. It's going to be very busy um, 18 months to, to figure all that out. All right, let's move on. 
Uh, the last three sub bullets on the uh, first step, uh, once you have that gap, uh, set of gaps identified, uh, you want to create a plan and figure out well, how do you get from A to B? You know, how do you be, be compliant? And then prepare your infrastructure and establish a UDI solution. Now, I want to touch base and go again, a little bit deeper dive into the submission solution. Uh, there's some options that you have available and have some advantages uh, for <laughs> various uh, and disadvantages for each, each one of those options. You can manually submit data and you actually have uh, two variants of that. Uh, you can manually uh, type in data from a, in, into the actual web form interface or you can uh, manually upload an XML file. So uh, a little bit of a challenge in creating that XML file, uh, but those are your two options working directly with the web interface. Your other options would be to make use of uh, some type of system that automatically manages that information and transmits data in a automated fashion to the uh, Unimed database uh, in, in a machine to machine fashion using uh, one of these uh, access points. So you have a couple options there. You can actually build a system, you can buy a system, install it, or you can what, do what we refer to as rent a system, basically uh, subscribe to a, a uh, software as a service uh, type of system. That's actually what Retech offers, uh, where you, you connect up uh, to our platform and then we do all the uh, mechanics and taking care of the protocol and building the XML file and so on. So you do have a couple of options there. All right. all right, moving on to step two. Set up your product ID. Um, it's maybe something that's already in place. You might have to uh, jump to a new one. You can then assign identifiers to your portfolio. Um, I'm going to touch base and highlight some of the basic UDI activity. We got a lot of questions about this particular topic. Yeah. So just the uh, just show the differences here between a basic UDI and a uh, regular device identifier. Uh, no barcode and and similar type of presentation where it's a, a GS1 implementation. Um, if we flesh this out, you would have a high level description of your basic UDI and then underneath that your actual product. So you might have a plastic forcep and a hierarchy of a, a pouch and a box. Uh, but also in that very same basic UDI group, you might have stainless steel forceps, you might have stainless steel locking forceps and, and so on. So there is this hierarchy of the actual uh, devices. The last two points on collecting data would be to assemble your uh, data, pull it all together, and establish the data governments uh, surrounding that particular data. We'll take a quick walk through. So there are a number of attributes, 36, that are relative to the, the basic UDI. And uh, 76 attributes are specific for each device identifier. So it gets to be a, a, a quite a task to keep track of. We'll move on to cleansing data. Obviously you need to verify data, uh, normalize it, make sure it meets the regulations, establish version and controls. And the last step here, uh, comply with the regulations. Now you'll need to go out and create those regulatory accounts, uh, submit the data, verify that it's actually submitted there and maintain uh, the data over the course of time. So we talked about creating, collecting, cleansing and complying. So here's a quick summary of, of those four C's. 